given his son to die for you, for his sake, who gives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will speak the intro to the day responsibly. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. I pray for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Regarding his son, 
who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> through him, for his name's sake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God, called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord.
grace, mercy, and peace are now yours. For God our Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's gospel, God's powerful word gave Joseph ability and desire to do something that he was previously unwilling and unable to do. Joseph took Mary home as his wife. Dear Christian friends, Joseph is a wonderful example for us because he's an average Christian and a decent guy. Sit Joseph in our pews and he would blend in with the rest of us. Simply another Christian trying to find a way to make it through to next week. Certainly, Joseph is comparable to most of us in that he does not want to be too excessively harmful to his neighbor. As God said, Joseph was a righteous man, unwilling to put Mary to shame. Those words, unwilling to put Mary to shame, those words indicate that Joseph was willing to go to certain lengths to guard and protect his neighbor, just as you and I are willing to go to certain lengths. Mary was found to be with child. That is, Mary was pregnant. And Joseph knew that he had not been involved. Nevertheless, Joseph still cared enough for his neighbor that he did not wish to make Mary's situation worse for her. He resolved to divorce her quietly. By resolving to divorce Mary, Joseph illustrates for us the utter impossibility of the Eighth Commandment. What is the Eighth Commandment? You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does that mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation, but defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest way. Joseph seems to have taken his best shot at the commandment. He resolved to divorce her quietly because he did not want to hurt Mary's reputation. It seems as though Joseph summoned all his strength and did everything in his power, both with regard to his neighbor and the commandment of God. That's the problem. Joseph did everything in his power to love his neighbor by keeping the commandment, and he still failed. Even if Joseph somehow managed to keep Mary's reputation somewhat intact, even if he could still speak well of her to others, in his own heart and mind, Joseph could not put the best construction on Mary's situation. Joseph could not think of any way to frame Mary's situation acceptably. And he could not explain things to himself in the kindest way. Thus, he resolved to divorce her quietly. You can't really blame the guy, can you? Set aside the intimate marital aspects of the situation. Think only of the betrayal that Joseph must have felt. Mary was someone in whom Joseph had placed trust and confidence. Mary had placed certain expectations on Joseph. I'm sorry, Joseph had placed certain expectations on Mary. <coughs> Just as you also have placed certain expectations upon those close family members in your life. All Joseph's expectations crumbled to the ground in a moment. Murray might have tried to explain, but you could probably understand how fantastic and fabricated the story must have seemed in Joseph's injured years. God did this, Mary. 
So, by reason of weakness and injury, perhaps by reason of anger, this fellow Christian of ours found himself unable to put a good explanation on what his dear loved one had done. Like you, Joseph probably felt like he was going the extra mile for Mary just by keeping his mouth shut. Like you, there was only so much Joseph could do with a bruised mind and an angry heart. So God intervened. God acted not merely for Mary, but also for Joseph too. As Joseph considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Meditate on this gospel, dear saints. Think of those dear loved ones by whom you have been betrayed. Those whose actions you have been unwilling or unable to explain to your own self in the kindest way. And then return to today's gospel and look at the wonders God has done. God poured his healing words into Joseph's wounded ears, sending the angel of the Lord to Joseph in a dream. Now we have no reason to think that God will speak to us in dreams today, but we don't need such speeches either. We do not need dreams because we have the scriptures and we have the preaching of the church. Thus it is written in Hebrews chapter 1. In many and various ways God spoke to his people of old through the prophets. And this certainly includes dreams and visions. But now in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. Through these scriptures in which God himself speaks through the preaching of the church where the Holy Spirit continues to sound forth through all ages. God speaks to us with the very same miracle producing power by which he spoke to Joseph. Through his words. God heals us as he healed Joseph. God assures us as he assured Joseph. God gives us power to do what we are otherwise unwilling and unable to do, just as he did for Joseph. And in so speaking, God worked for Joseph a change of mind. Joseph awoke from sleep. He did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. We do not need to think that the angel had threatened Joseph or intimidated him or had forced Joseph's hand. The angel's command carries the power of divine promise and the assurance of divine strength. What did the angel say? He said, Joseph, son of David. And with these words, the angel returned Joseph to that great messianic hope in which Joseph was born and in which he lived all the days of his life. The angel said, Do not fear. Thus, 
miraculously calming Joseph's troubled mind in much the same way the words do not fear calm those frightened shepherds on a hillside at Jesus' birth. The angel also pointed Joseph to the hope and forgiveness that God created in his son, Jesus. The angel did this by saying to Joseph, The child conceived in Mary's womb is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. God wants you to know the very same things that he wanted Joseph to know. In the same way that the father spoke through the angel and said, Joseph, son of David, God, your heavenly father, likewise speaks to you at the beginning of every worship service, saying to you, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And with these words, God returns you to that ancient hope that he gave you and in which you have lived your days. The same hope by which Joseph lived under the name Son of David. In the same way that God spoke through the angel and said, fear not. God likewise speaks to you in the absolution and he says to you, I forgive you all your sins. How can fear remain when sins are forgiven? God's forgiveness comes out of his perfect love for you. And the scriptures promise that perfect love casts out all fear. Again. In the same way that God pointed Joseph to Jesus saying he will save his people from their sins. God likewise wants you to fix your eyes upon Jesus. Jesus possesses the power of healing. Jesus possesses the power of restoration. Jesus possesses the power of a changed mind and a right spirit within you. And a renewed sense of devotion or those who have sinned against you. <clears throat> Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. God's powerful word gave to Joseph the ability and desire to do something he was unable and unwilling to do. Have you been injured or betrayed? Have you done your best with the commandment, with all of your strength, and still failed? Look at Joseph. God helped his servant by means of a miracle. You have every reason to expect that the Lord your God will perform the same miracle for you in his good time and according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Let the word of Christ dwell richly within you, as God says in Colossians. Say with that guy who wrote Psalm 66, if I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened to the voice of my prayer. Then hope with Joseph for the coming of the Lord. Your God promises you, those who hope in the Lord shall renew their strength. <clears throat> the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let's stand up and say the creed, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God.
fervent love for 